Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Greg and you are watching Introduction to Appian Interfaces. Now in this video, we're going to talk about how to pass information into and out of an interface object. Now don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment to see more videos like this one, and check out our other relevant resources linked in the description below. All right, let's get started. So here we are on our interface object where we're configuring a contact form. So you'll notice we already have first name, last name, email, and phone number. And what we want to be able to do is capture information on this interface and then have it save to a database. Now, in order for that process to work, this interface is gonna be one object passing information to another object, a process model. Now for our demonstration today, we're just focusing on the interface and how we're gonna pass information out of the interface. Now, when we're talking about data and we're talking about how to pass information into and out of an interface object, we're talking about using rule inputs. You'll see that here at the top right. Now, when we're configuring a rule input, we're giving a way for data to come into the object as well as out of the object. So when we create a rule input, we want to pass first name, last name, and email and phone number, but we wanna make sure that that data stays together as it does represent a single contact. Now, I've already created a record type object, as you'll see here. And we already have a data model, first name, last name, email, and phone number. And this record object is also connected to a data source linked to a table in a database. Now, this record object is doing two different things for me. One, it's creating a way for me to group information together as a data type. And later, when I configure my process model to write the record uh, to the database, I can utilize this record object as the source and pointer, so that way it does save the data to the appropriate location. In this case, the data source, uh, demo, contact, the table in the database. All right, so we're gonna move right back into the interface object here, and I wanna go ahead and create a rule input, which represents a grouping of my related data points. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus icon here for new rule input, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name, uh, contact uh, details. Uh, an appropriate description maybe contains like first name, last name, uh, et cetera. Now the data type, this is going to be my record type. And my record type contains the uh, grouping, the structure, first name, last name, email, and phone number. Now in my case, I'm only capturing one contact on this interface. Uh, if I was gonna be contacting or uh, capturing multiple contacts, then I would select the array, multiple values. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. Now you'll notice we already have a cancel rule input already created here. When I chose the template, one, uh, one column form template, it automatically gave me a cancel rule input. So if I was to click cancel, the value of true would be saved to that rule input. And then that value would then get passed out into a process model. Now on the process model, there would be a gateway that would check to see if cancel is true. And if it is, then cancel the process. Otherwise, if cancel is not true, it would take the data from my other rule input contact details and then move that down the line. Now what I wanna be able to do is map these first name, last name, email, and phone number inputs to that rule input. Now notice, if I was to type something into my first name field here, and then as a user would, they would now go down to the next field, that data disappears because it has nowhere to go. So let's get that configured. I'm gonna click on the first name field, come on over to the component configuration, and scroll down to display value and save input too. Now display value is what's going to allow information to be displayed in that field. So we would configure where that information is coming from. Save input to, where is that data saving to? Now in my case, if a user enters information, I want that information to be saved 
but also not disappear from the screen. So that's why we're going to have the save input to and display value fields be the exact same thing. So first we'll choose the display value using the drop down, and I'm going to choose the first name field in my rule input. All right, same thing for save input to. Using the drop down, choosing the first name field. And then we'll go ahead and do that for the rest of these. All right, so now that we have each of these configured, now it's time to test and make sure it works. So again, as if you're the user, we're gonna go ahead and fill out a name. And then we'll move on down to the next field. And then the next field and the next field. Now what we're doing here is we want to verify that all this information is saving into the rule input. Because after all, if it's in, in the rule input, it's gonna be able to pass to the next part in the process. So if I look at my rule inputs here, click on the plus icon to the left of contact details, here I can see the information being captured. Great, it works. Now, if I was to come back and let's go ahead and delete this information, let's remove this information from first name and last name. That information is now removed from the rule input. And now the user can enter something else. All right. Now, Rule inputs, again, are used for passing information into and out of an interface. But what if we just wanted the information to stay within the interface because it's going to be used by the interface? Well, that's going to be the local variables. Now, local variables is a, a variable that can just hold on to information to be used within the interface. You can think of local variables as a place to hold uh, temporary information, or to hold large sets of information like from a query. You can also utilize local variables to support uh, conditional requirements or dynamic expressions, where if a user selects a button or selects an option in a dropdown, that could impact something else on the interface from showing, hiding, or a different uh, selection of items uh, based off of their initial selection. And that's it. Want to learn more? Check out our other videos about how data flows through objects and how to use local variables. All right, bye for now.